So we can now maybe potentially add another name to the list of the fraternity of NFLSU. But where does that leave his position group for LSU in 2023? We'll get into that on today's edition of Locked on LSU. You are Locked on LSU, your daily podcast on the LSU Tigers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, thank you for making Lock and LSU your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, we are part of the Locked On Network, your team every day. You can also find us on YouTube. So you can find us on your preferred podcast platform and YouTube. You name it, you can find us there. My name is Caroline Fenton, and I am your host, as I am every day. I graduated from LSU. I've been covering LSU football since 2016, and I'm now a sports talk radio host in Nashville, Tennessee. But before we get into the good stuff, I want to let you all know that LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That is linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So BJ Ojolari over the weekend has officially announced that he will declare for the NFL draft, which was to be expected. I don't think that any of us went into this season thinking that BJ Ojolari would come back for his senior year. But then again, I didn't think Ajahn Booty would come back for his senior year. So, you know, I guess anything is on the table at this point. But BJ Ojolari becomes the second LSU player to declare for the NFL draft, joining Jay Ward. So those two LSU defensive players will be, you know, keeping their fingers crossed for draft night. BJ Ojolari has been three years at LSU, and I love BJ Ojolari. I don't think that I can say enough good words about BJ Ojolari because, of course, we know about his impact on the field. We know about how good he is as a football player and how good he is at what he does, but really, truly, just how good of a person BJ Ojolari is. And I don't know him personally, but I view BJ Ojolari as such a wonderful ambassador for this LSU football program. He reminds me a lot of, you know, not necessarily personality wise, but more so the fact that they are just gamers and great players and also just good people off the field and just love LSU. BJ Ojolari reminds me a lot of Devin White kind of in, in that way that Devin White just loved LSU. Devin White loved Louisiana. Devin White loved his teammates. He was just as good of a person off the field as he was a player on the field. And BJ Ojolari was number 18 for a reason. We all know how much the number 18 really, truly means. And, you know, number seven goes to the best player on the field, but number 18 goes to the best all around player, person, leader, lover of this team, lover of this state. And that absolutely, and BJ Ojolari represented that so well. So, you know, and BJ Ojolari also, he stuck it out at LSU when it really wasn't easy. And that's no shade to any player that did decide to leave LSU over the last couple of years uh, when the program had some question marks around it, when the program was in a little bit of a disarray. No shade whatsoever to any player that felt like they had a better opportunity elsewhere. But I think it shows a lot about B.J. Ojolari and his character, that he still decided to come to LSU, even when there were question marks, that he stuck it out in two really difficult years in 2020 and 2021 when it could have been so easy for him to go elsewhere. I mean, his brother, Aziz Ojolari, went to Georgia. B.J. Ojolari probably could have looked at that opportunity at Georgia if there one was one that arised for him and said, you know what, like my brother made it to the NFL going to Georgia. Georgia looks like it's a much more stable program. And I don't even know if this was a thought that went through his head, but I'm just thinking through, you know, all of the information that I have at hand. B.J. Ojolari probably could have looked at the rest of the college football world and said, look, my my path could be so much easier elsewhere. But he decided to stick it out. He decided to stick it out through a couple of really difficult years. And it paid off. Because B.J. Ojolari had a breakout year last year, and he continued to build upon that this year. This year, 58 tackles, eight and a half for loss, five and a half sacks, and a forced fumble. I mean, B.J. Ojolari was, had become a household name outside of LSU households, outside of LSU fans. I think that any fan of an SEC team 
or any fan of a team that played LSU this year, they viewed B.J. Ojolari as a threat, and they viewed B.J. Ojolari as one of those guys. If you're going to list three, four, or five guys on a team that you're about to face, B.J. Ojolari was one of them. And that was going into the season that continued throughout the season because he continued to prove himself week in and week out. And he had the stats to prove it. And now B.J. Ojolari, now that he's decided to declare for the NFL draft, now he's entering the NFL draft as one of the top defensive linemen in this draft. So that begs the question. Now that B.J. Ojolari has declared for the NFL draft, can B.J. Ojolari be a first-round pick? And I don't think it's that out of the out of the question that B.J. Ojolari could find his way in the first round. I kind of did a little bit of digging around some of the, you know, the NFL draft gurus and some of their early mock drafts. And it's December. A lot can happen over the next three, four or five months. A lot can happen um, at pro days and at combines, um, either in players' favors or against it. Um, but Dane Brugler for, of The Athletic has B.J. Ojolari slated at the beginning of the of the second round has the Rams taking B.J. Ojolari with their first pick. The Rams don't have a first-round pick this year. Um, they you know, sold out all of their picks in order for to get their Super Bowl, which, hey, I guess you know, it pays off. Um, Dane Brugler has the Rams taking B.J. Ojolari with their first pick in the second round. Mel Kuyper has uh, B.J. Ojolari. Mel Kuyper hasn't come out with any updated 2023 mock drafts. But it has B.J. Ojolari ranked as the seventh ranked outside linebacker in this class. Uh, just based off of Mel Kuyper's evaluation, I wouldn't say that's a first round grade. I would say that's probably a, a high to mid second round grade. Um, and I don't really know if I necessarily agree with B.J. Ojolari being the seventh rate ranked outside linebacker as Will, uh, Will Anderson at the top, of course. I think that any NFL draft guru or anyone with eyes, really, or anyone that's watched any Alabama football uh, would probably agree. But Ryan Wilson of CBS, he's a NFL beat writer for CBS, has uh, B.J. Ojolari going 29th overall. Um, I've even seen some mock drafts that have B.J. Ojolari going as high as top 10 in the draft. So they're kind of all over the place. And we're going to start to see things fall into place. We're going to see start some a little bit more consensus across these, quote unquote, NFL draft gurus. Um, over the next few weeks and months. But I would say the overall consensus for B.J. Ojolari right now is late first round, early second round. I probably lean maybe a little bit more early second round just because this is a fairly heavy quarterback draft and you can expect all of the quarterbacks to push all of the other um, other players down a bit. And But you look at the NFL and the three most prized position groups right now in, in this era of the NFL and in such a pass-heavy league, it's the passer, the quarterback, the pass catcher, most likely the wide receivers. You don't see tight ends going very high. So the wide, elite wide receivers and also the pass rushers. And that's exactly what B.G. Ojolari did. That's what he has really emerged as being his greatest strength is a pure pass rusher. That's the role that he played at LSU. And that's what I see his role being moving forward. And I see that there's probably at least one NFL GM out there that would value that enough to be a first round pick, if not a high second round pick. So again, B.G. Ojolari, Declaring for the NFL draft, as I think we all expected. Excited for, for B.J. Ojolari. That's absolutely a loss for this LSU football program. But like I mentioned, I know that he will continue to be an ambassador for this LSU football program moving forward. But coming up next, B.J. Ojolari enters the NFL draft. So that leaves a hole where B.J. Ojolari played this year. So what does LSU's defensive line look like in 2023? I want to get into that coming up next. But first... I want to tell you about LinkedIn jobs. So these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. And when it comes to your livelihood and when it comes to your dream of creating the small business, you want to be 100 percent certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. So that's why you have to check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. That's the best part. It's for free. I know that a lot of us are experiencing the, you know, the effects of a of a potential recession. And I the companies that you work for might also feel the same way. So I work for a radio station and we've been feeling the effects of people not really wanting to dish out ad dollars and we've seen it in our revenue. So we didn't want to have to go out and hire a high a hiring agency to find someone to fill the open roles that we had. We just turned to LinkedIn jobs. It was fast and it was free. And we found the right person to help us reach our end of the year goals. 
So all you got to do is go to LinkedIn Jobs, add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are hiring. They've got simple tools like screening questions that make it super easy to focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you would like to interview and hire. So no worries about interviewing all these people who don't have the right expertise or experience because LinkedIn Jobs will take care of that for you. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks for making Locked on LSU your first listen today. So for your second listen today, check out Locked on Sports today. For the games that matter the most, the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights that only Locked on can provide. Locked on Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. So before we get into exactly what LSU's defensive line looks like in 2023, now that B.G. Ojolari is entering the NFL draft, who is going to fill in that spot? Before we're going to get into that, I would be remiss if I didn't extend my thoughts, my best wishes, my best thoughts and, and prayers for Michael Leach and his family. Um, if you didn't see it, um, Michael Leach was airlifted to the University of Mississippi Medical Center in Jackson, Mississippi on Sunday night being treated for a pretty severe heart attack. Um, and everything that I've heard, all of the releases and updates that I've seen on Twitter says that he's in pretty critical condition. Um, I know that we cheer for LSU every day, um, but today I'm cheering for for Mike Leach to win and for his family. So I'm extending my best wishes to Mike Leach, his family, and the entire Mississippi State family. And I know that you all are probably doing the same as well. But B.J. Ojolari, like I mentioned, entering the NFL draft. So that leaves a hole to be filled in his spot for LSU in 2023. So before we decide who was the best candidate to fill that role, what exactly was the role that B.J. Ojolari played? So he really kind of played in that, that Jack linebacker role. What exactly does that mean? So the Jack role is kind of a hybrid pass rusher and linebacker. And it takes a fairly specific type of player and size of player to fill in that role because you need to be light enough to be able to move around like a linebacker and drop back in coverage if need be. But you also need to be, you know, big enough to take down a quarterback, to be able to sack the quarterback, but also light enough on your feet to be able to get up and sack the quarterback and beat those offensive linemen. So you kind of, it's not an overly large defensive lineman. It's a lineman that has a little bit, you know, pep in his step, but also big enough to be able to, to take down those offensive linemen, to compete with the offensive linemen, and also to take down that quarterback. That's what P. Joe Gilari did. And it's really, you know, it's more of a, a pure pass rusher position that can also drop back um, in coverage if need be. So who can kind of fill in that Jack linebacker position if that is a role in this defense in 2023 that Matt House and company would continue to, to like to fill? So a couple candidates for 2023 that can fill that Jack role. And Mike Jones Jr. is one that I'm looking at to be a serious candidate to take over that role, to kind of fill in B. Joe Gilari's spot. Of course, he transferred from Clemson into LSU in 2021. He has one year of eligibility left. So I believe he spent three years at Clemson. He just finished up his second year at LSU, one year of eligibility left with that, that COVID year and then the, the red shirting at the beginning of his, his career at Clemson. But I think what Mike Jones Jr. presents is that he can play inside, he can play outside, he can play nickel. He's incredibly versatile. Now, I don't know if he has the size and skill to fill in seamlessly um, into what BGO Gilari is leaving, but he does pose that versatility that I believe this LSU defense wants to use on the defensive line. Um, I don't know if he's a pass rusher. That's the biggest question that I have, but he is incredibly versatile. So if you can add a little bit of size to play in that that pure pass rusher role, I think Mike Jones Jr. could absolutely fill in that role, but he might just be, he might just be an outside guy. It might just be an outside linebacker guy or an inside linebacker guy or a middle middle guy, and he finds his role this season, and it's not necessarily more of a versatile jack role, more so as a just pure middle linebacker role. But Mike Jones Jr. is going to be one in his final year of eligibility at LSU that I'm looking to possibly fill in that role for Ojolari. And, of course, this is based off of no fact whatsoever. This is simply based off of my own opinion. But another serious candidate that I do believe could absolutely fill in that role for B. Joe Gilari that might seem like a little bit more of a natural fit is Savion Jones. He was kind of in and out this season, um, and he's kind of 
taken a little bit of a, a, a step back. And I know I read that he seeked out mentoring from some of the older guys on the defensive line, seeked out mentoring from Ali Gay and from BGO Jalari. Um, but he's been able to get in and execute himself. I mean, it's 20, 22 tackles on the season, five for loss, one forced fumble. He's going into his third season at LSU. So I think that this is the year that Savion Jones can absolutely step up. He's got two years behind him of adding on weight of uh, learning this, learning himself, learning this defense, at least a year of learning this defense and two years of men being mentored by some of these older players. And in year three, I think he's ready to take that step forward. So Savion Jones and play that Jack role that's being left by B. Joe Delari entering the, the NFL draft. The last one is Harold Perkins. I mean, when we talk defensive line, we talk linebackers and we talk pass rush. I think that Harold Perkins has to be part of the conversation because he's proved this year just how good he can truly be. But my question with Harold Perkins is, is he ready for that yet? It's something that Brian Kelly has mentioned in the past is they would use him more so as a quarterback spy that can drop back and also sack the quarterback just because he wasn't quite ready to be effective in the passing game to stop the passing game that he was really great at stopping the run. He can, he can get to the quarterback, but when it came to playing on the outside, he just wasn't quite refined enough to do that. So that's my question with Harold Perkins is, is he ready to take that step in year two? Is he going to be the best option for LSU in that role? And if he is, then wonderful because he's proved how much talent he truly has. And I think the, the fact that he still has room to grow and he still has areas to learn is a really scary thing for other teams in the SEC. But that's my question with Harold Perkins is, is he ready to play that pure pass rusher role? And is that where his strengths really lie? Or is Savion Jones, for example, ready to fill in that role right now? And we give Harold Perkins another year of doing what he has done so well this past year, doing that next year and allowing him another year to grow both physically and also learning this defense as well. So I'm looking at Mike Jones Jr., Savion Jones, and also Harold Perkins to take a next step forward and start to fill in those roles um, that B. Joe Delari played in the past couple of years. And the, the other thing is Jaqueline and Roy. I don't know what Jaqueline and Roy's plans will be. I think that he should be part of this conversation. He does have one year of eligibility left. But where it stands right now on December 12th, I expect Jaqueline and Roy to declare for the NFL draft. But if he does decide to come back for that final year of eligibility, um, I think he's absolutely in the, in the conversation for this as well. But the 2023 defensive line, you're looking at Mason Smith getting back in the in the rotation. That is huge. I always, I think to myself sometimes, sometimes it keeps me up at night. Like, what could this defensive line have been as dominant and good as it was this year? Imagine adding Mason Smith into it and just how much better it could have been, which is just wild to think about. But Mason Smith back in the, ro in the rotation, Makai Wingo had a great first year at LSU after transferring from Missouri after his true freshman season. So this defensive line has a good bit of returning talent and a lot of young talent that now has another year under their belts. But LSU is going to have to add some pieces. So what are some other defensive linemen out there that LSU already has their eye on? We'll get into that coming up next. But before we do that, I want to tell you about Simply Safe. So at Lofton LSU, we believe that home should be where you and your family feel safest, especially over the holidays. I and mean, this season, give you, yourself and your family the gift of peace and protection with the number one rated home security system, Simply Safe. And right now, listen up Simply Safe is offering Lockdown LSU listeners 40% off a new security system. Do not put this off. Get it right now. Here's why I love it. So one time I was out and about and I got an alert that there was somebody in my neighborhood who was walking around and was and like trying to break into cars and was yelling. And a lot of people in my neighborhood felt very unsafe and unsettled by this person that was just kind of wreaking havoc around the neighborhood. So all I had to do was check in on the Simply Safe app. And I checked in with a 24 seven monitoring agent. And I just checked in to say, hey, is my home okay? Is my home safe? And they said, yep, no problem. You're totally fine. You can return back 
to your home and feel 100% safe. But it would be really nice to know if it wasn't safe to return my home. And that's what's so wonderful about Simply Safe is that they have 24 seven monitoring agents that can detect if the threat around your home is real or not. So you can check in on the app, you can check in early in the morning, late at night, they have got you covered. It's the fast protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe that can capture critical evidence and verify that the threat is real. So you can get higher priority police response if the threat indeed truly is real. So don't miss out on your chance to save big on my favorite security system. Give 40% off any new system at simplysafe.com slash locked on college today. That is simplysafe.com slash locked on college. There's no safe like Simply Safe. So what is LSU's defensive line shaping up at and in 2023. B. Joe Delari is entering the NFL dra draft. Victor Quellen Roy most likely will. That has not been announced, but that's just my own opinion. Mason Smith makes the return back. Makai Wingo, I can only expect, takes a few steps forward. But LSU is going to have to add a little bit of depth. And how do they do that in the transfer portal? So LSU has already offered four defensive linemen offers for the 2023 year defensive lineman in the transfer portal, plus the one in uh, coming in in the 2023 recruiting class. So who is who are these players that LSU has offered? First, the most recent one is Kyan Bars, and if I'm mispronouncing that, I apologize. Kyan, Kyan Bars, a defensive lineman out of Arizona who spent four years playing in Arizona. He was all Pac-12 this year. He had his best year in 2021. He played in 10 games, 33 tackles, eight of those for loss, had Five sacks in 2021. One red flag a little bit for me was those are the only career sacks that he ha has is in that 2021 season. Had zero in 2022, but he did start in all 12 games, um, had 39 tackles, four and a half of those for loss. So production tapered off just a bit in 2022. Um, but that is an uh, uh, offer that's been extended by this LSU team is Kyan Barr's defensive lineman out of Arizona. And I think the, the key thing here – while I'm a little bit concerned about the production that's tapered off this year, I think what is encouraging is just four years of experience. 12 games this year, starting 10 games last year, he's been around. You know, he, he has experience, he has seniority, and I think that's what this defensive line could use in 2023. Josiah Stewart, a defensive lineman out of Coastal Carolina, is another player that's received an offer from LSU as he has entered the transfer portal. The Shants. Spent two years at Coastal Carolina, 6'2", 230 pounds. It's good size there. Also, best season came in 2021. As a true freshman, listen to this, 43 tackles, 15 and a half of those for loss, 12 and a half sacks, and 13 forced fumbles. Just a, a wild breakout season as a true freshman. Super impressive. Again, in 2022, um, similar to Kyan Bars out of Arizona, tapered off just a little bit in 2022. 36 tackles, 10 tackles for loss, and three sacks. Still a pretty solid year for Josiah Stewart, the defensive lineman out of Coastal Carolina. Um, Braden Fisk, defensive tackle out of Western Michigan, also has received a uh, an offer from LSU. Similar to Kyan Bars out of Arizona, has a ton of experience. He has five years of experience at Western Michigan, one year of eligibility left. Also, big dude, huge size, 6'5", 300 pounds. Like I mentioned, probably couldn't play with a size like that, probably couldn't play a pass rusher position just because those pass rushers have to be a little bit lighter on their feet in order to get up and get to the quarterback. Uh, but Braden Fisk uh, in 2022 had 58 tackles, 12 of those for loss, six sacks, two forced fumbles, and he had a two and a half sack game, his best game of the year against Toledo. Um, so he has proven to be uh, a good, a good sized veteran player that could come into LSU and bring some size and bring some seniority into this defensive line. But finally, Braden Swinson, a uh, edge rusher out of Oregon, has also been offered by LSU. Um, he said he spent three years at Oregon, but is classified as a sophomore. He's 6'4, 245, uh, pretty good size there. In 2021, again, had his best year of his college career in 2021 with 24 tackles, three sacks, one forced fumble. And then in 2022, um, he started in five games, played in all 12, but had eight tackles, one of those for loss, zero sacks. So I think for, for Bladen Swinson, it wasn't necessarily a case of, you know, talent just 
tapered off. Just, you know, he, you know, had a breakout season and then couldn't match it. I think more so for Braden Swinson. He just got buried on the depth chart of some really big defensive linemen and really talented defensive linemen in Oregon. Um, so that's another player to keep an eye on. So those four defensive linemen have been extended offers by LSU. And then you add in four-star recruit Deshaun Womack, who will come into the 2023 class. He's 6'4", 240 pounds. So at, coming in as a as a high school kid, he has some good size. And as he comes in in the summertime, I can only assume that he'll continue to add some some more size. He'll bulk up a bit. Um, was the fourth ranked defensive lineman out of um, in the country. Um, he's out of Baltimore, Maryland. Was the top ranked recruit out of Maryland. So I'm not sure if Deshaun Womack. I'm not a an expert. We will speak with John Garcia Jr. later on this week and get the insight insight on Deshaun Womack and if he can play a role and contribute to LSU as a true freshman. Um, but I don't know if that's going to be the case or not. But LSU absolutely going to need to add some experience and some size on the defensive line. So we'll keep an eye on those four, and we'll continue to keep an eye on any offers that LSU extends to players in the transfer portal moving forward. But coming up in tomorrow's episode, what does the quarterback position look like? I want to take a deep dive into that and exactly what LSU's uh, guy under center will look like in 2023. But thank you for making Locked on LSU your first listen. But for your second listen, check out Locked on Sports today. It's the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts.